Good morning and welcome to Sunday Square Off. I'm Bram Resnick. We are just a few days away from the first votes being cast for Arizona's open U.S. Senate seat. It's Democrat Kirsten Sinema against Republican Martha McSally. The race has national implications. Arizona voters could decide which party controls the Senate. And if you've been gripped by the Brett Kavanaugh saga, which party has the upper hand on confirming Supreme Court justices? Now here's the latest news on the state of the Cinema McSally Senate race and the election for governor. And if you think campaign ads are out of control, you're right. We have some stunning numbers on how much money is being spent. Liberal protester Kirsten Cinema can't be trusted. Arizona's two U.S. Senate candidates have bombarded voters with TV ads. If she'll lie just to get elected, she'll lie about anything. Congresswoman Kirsten Cinema and Martha McSally and their allies spending an Arizona campaign record $41 million and counting. Liberal protester Kirsten Cinema wanted to shut Luke Air Force Base down. Cinema side with the edge, 24 million to 17 million. But the numbers that really Really count the polls show Democrat cinema with an average four point lead over Republican McSally. The race still rated a toss up, which means more TV ads. To the race for governor between incumbent Republican Doug Ducey and Democratic challenger David Garcia. And these might be the most stunning numbers of any Arizona campaign. Ducey and his allies are outspending Garcia. 50 to 1 on TV advertising. David Garcia is liberal on illegal immigration. That's right, 50 to 1. Garcia opposes tougher border security. Ducey's team has poured almost $15 million into nonstop TV ads. Garcia, less than $300,000. These ads are false and meant to distract you from Ducey's failure to fix our public schools. The polls show Ducey has an average nine-point lead over Garcia. That lead has been expanding with each successive poll. And a reminder that the deadline to register to vote in the November election is this coming Tuesday. The easiest way to register is by going to servicearizona.com. It'll take you less than five minutes. Now, if you're on the permanent early voter list, early ballots will be mailed to you starting on Wednesday. Now to a major development in the race for Phoenix mayor. Candidate Daniel Valenzuela now says he won't keep his 40 hour a week job as a Glendale firefighter if he's elected mayor. The mayor's job is viewed as a 60 hour a week assignment on its own. Now that issue came up during the 12 News mayoral debate three weeks ago when I questioned each candidate about whether they'd work full time as mayor. Ma yes or no full time job. I, I intend in serving in my community uh, as, so a, as, a, as a firefighter in the West Valley and as mayor, but I will, Bram, I, I have to explain this. If you just allow me 10 seconds, I have to explain this. 10 seconds. This. Okay. As a council member serving as a firefighter, no one has cast more votes, led on more issues than I have at City Hall, and uh, I intend and in continue to serve my community uh, in this capacity. How can you now, Valenzuela had a hard time explaining how he could handle two full-time jobs serving both the people of Glendale and Phoenix. Late last week, Valenzuela announced that if elected, he would take an unpaid leave of absence from his Glendale job. He would earn no points for his public safety pension while in office, but wouldn't have to leave the pension system with the new job of mayor if he wins. When we come back...